I'm super excited about this. I've got the Pro Set Desert Storm uh, from the year. It was 1992. Does it have a year on it? Guess not. Might have it in, in the inside. But yeah, you've got uh, cards that uh, were made to benefit uh, veterans of Desert Storm, of course. And 100% uh, of the profits from those uh, from this, these sales went there. So you had a bunch of these lying around, bar on eBay. Uh, I think it was about 20 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. Not not too, maybe 25 bucks, maybe 30 at the most. So it's it's a pretty decent you know, price on it, and um, you know, not too expensive. That it's like not worth it. But uh, I like how you have um, our allied flags on here you got the uh, US the UK Canada and Saudi Arabia and on the other side you've got France is that Denmark and then uh, I have to look up the other two here uh, but yeah you've got um, just some good packaging on here really good stuff for uh, the time frame you got the Marine Corps Army Navy Air Force uh, the seal for each of those branches on the front here too. So I'm not sure if this is a complete set. It does not say complete set on it. It does say 256 or 253 cards and they range from uh, geography, military skills, leaders, intelligence files, personnel, governments, and military assets. So there's a good mixture of topics covered here. Um, the ones on the, on the front, you've got, uh, uh, let's see some you know, military ordnance. You've got aircraft carrier, the USS Theodore Roosevelt CVN seventy one, uh, the U.S. Marine Warrior. So, um, yeah, let's, let's pop it open and see what we got here. Um, looking forward to getting a uh, like the, the um, George Bush as the president is a, a, a big one on here. Um, is there? I, I'm not sure if there's a Saddam Hussein one. I do have as well, before we get into this, let's actually look at these from uh, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003. They put out these cards for um, finding high ranking members of the Iraqi government and military. So you've got, uh, of course, Ace of Spades, Saddam Hussein. Uh, they try to, you know, with the higher ranking members were the higher rating I mean, were the ace king queen jack and what I, what I loved about these is you had a bunch of people that didn't have a picture so they just had this you know this, this blank uh background on there but you have varying degrees of some of these pictures too in terms of quality um you got some that look like this where it's like it looks like it's from a an atari 2600 game <laughs> and then you have some other pictures that are a little more high resolution and um more more clarity to them so you know if you found uh, uh kuse who is uh one of his sons it might have been his oldest son uh you had uh so these are supposed to be handed out to soldiers and uh army navy uh marine corps and they would be able to identify you know you have oh here's here's uday we we captured him i think uday and kuse were captured and or maybe they were killed I, f I forget the exact story i was in like middle school when this happened I, rem I remember the night of the invasion watching on cnn before bedtime around eight o'clock eight thirty you had a uh, the night vision cameras on the city of baghdad and you had uh ordnance being dropped on strategic targets in baghdad and you had marines crossing uh, army uh, special forces probably doing stuff behind enemy lines and getting the invasion going. But um, let's go back to this box set here. This is from uh, Desert Storm, 19 early 90s. Um, so we've got the sleeve here. Pop that off. We'll keep that over here. And then we've got three stacks in the box here, which um, you've got. It's a good way to get these out. There's a there's actually a hole for each slot on the back, so you can kind of push it up and you can retrieve all of them in that stack, like so. So you have all of them at once. So we've got 253 cards. So I guess that equates to about 
I don't know, first I have to divide it out, but let's get started here. We've got some cards in uh, a little bit, a little bit of a warp to them. They're kind of um, they got that. Um, they've been sitting around a while, I guess. Let's get going here. Army Navy Exchange Service. Service in the sand. Uh, this one's not in the best quality here. This one is uh, the map reading. You get the compass there. Women in combat. I think Desert Storm was one of the first real um, in, a, in a large scale women working on frontline duties. So we're going to showcase that there. Military time. Nice, nice Casio watch there. It's good stuff. You get the, the digital time on the bottom. So easy to tell. I'm sure it lights up too in the dark. Oh, moon phases. Got to know your moon phases. As a, as a military soldier, you got to know your moon phases. If you don't, you're going to be in a tight spot sometimes. So let's see, let me flip these over so they stay in order. But yeah, they're, they're definitely um, very, very, uh, not in the best shape. They just have a really big, um, the corners are great, but they definitely have a nice bend to them. All right, navigation. I'm just going to point out some, you know, some ones that stand out. Range. Oh, here we go. So, estimate range. Use a football field. There's this Dallas Cowboys stadium. I'm sure they could ask a lot of Army Marine Corps soldiers about that if they were. Remember the football, football field. That's how you can estimate 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards. Things like survival team runners. Here we go. We got an air, or we got a. Um, this is a. Not a carrier. I, I thought it was the USS Blue Ridge. This might be. Let's, let's read the back. I guess this is a. A command ship for amphib amphibious landing force. It was, a, it was a command decision kind of center point, and you had. Let's see, the Blue Ridge was sent to the Persian Gulf during Operation Desert Storm from her home port in Japan. The Mount Whitney is in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh, so the Mount Whitney was the other. Oh, so there's only two of these in the whole Navy at the point. At that point, it's a fighting ship. Here we have a ammunition ship. So we're getting into a lot of the naval aspects here. USS England. Another fighting ship, uh, cruiser, Lee class cruiser. Got another. This is a um, helicopter carrier, USS Incheon, which is, of course, named after a Korean War. Incheon was the Landing point for when the, the tide of that war was turning back to the United States. USS Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, a carrier right there. Get my pile orientated here. I think I'm out of whack. There we go. USS Midway, another carrier. Good, uh, I guess, nighttime shot there. Oh, it's, it's a lightning burst going off. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's a good one to get there. USS Wisconsin. Yeah, you had some battleships here in Persian Gulf conflict. I think the last time we'd have battleships as part of our deployment. USS Theodore Roosevelt. Another big carrier. I mean, we had probably what, four, four carriers there. So we got the USS Saratoga, USS Ranger, got some more battleships here. Actually, this one is a, a, uh, 
cru uh, missile cruiser. USS Missouri, that's a battleship. That's been around a while. Yeah, this is the Missouri. This is the ship that the Japanese surrendered on in World War II. Still in active service um, almost 50 years later. So that's that's an amazing thing there. Missouri might be in, based in Long Beach, California, so it might be out there currently. All, the, all these battleships are now just a place to go and visit, no longer in use. Got a minesweeper there. I'm not sure how much use that got in the conflict. I don't think Saddam was too worried about putting mines out there. All right, so this is the Farragut class destroyer right there. So my my father actually served on the USS Farragut. This is a, a class that was named after him too. So this must have been a more recent one. Got a hospital ship, frigate. So a lot of a lot of the navy part here. Another carrier, USS America. Ticonderoga destroyer, cruiser. Looks like they're all in sequential order, so this might be the complete set. Um, wasn't sure if it was a complete set or not, but I think it. I think it is. Got a landing craft here. M60 machine gun. So now we're in the probably the Army and Marine Corps section of the assets. Bradley fighting vehicle. And you got the T T62 main battle tank for the Iraqi army. I think we blew up a lot of those. The British um, Challenger main battle tank. T-72. wonder how many T-62s they had versus T-72s. Yeah, the French AMX tank. Uh, multiple rocket launch system. Some howitzers. Mobile artillery there. APC Hummer. The M1 Abrams main battle tank. The M1A2 Abrams battle tank. Sheridan. The M60. The uh, Vietnam era. That's the um, the Patton, right? Named after Patton, if I'm not mistaken. Stinger missile launcher. The Patriot rocket launcher. Tomahawk cruise missile. Scud. Sidewinder Maverick. Toe anti tank missile. You got the uh, F 111 Aardvark. Tomcat. Eagle. And then the Fighting Falcon. The F 4. I always forget. Yeah, the, the Wild Weasel. That was the, so the term, the nickname given to it, the Wild Weasel. It's a good name. I believe this, this might have been the first time the F-18 was used in a, in a full-scale conflict. F-18 Hornet, still used to this day. There were 128 of these deployed throughout six carrier groups. There were six carrier groups in Desert Storm. I think I said five earlier. Six. That's a lot. KC-10. Here we go with the Iraqi uh, Air Force. You got the MiG-21 Fishbed. 
one of the uh you know it's a jet but uh it can achieve mach 2 but i don't think it does much else i also have the mig 23 flogger here we have a couple other aircraft we got the united arab emirates the mirage 2000 the huey iroquois black hawk uh-60 the more european air force but i guess this is the saudi version the royal saudi air force you got the tornado F-111 stealth, uh, great stories behind this one and it's use of doubt storm. Um, I have the book, uh, you read the book called skunk works where I put that it's over there somewhere, but, uh, great story behind the implementation of this in desert storm. It was basically the first time we had a strategic bombing mission with numerous airplanes and 90 plus percent of the targets destroyed with zero casualties they didn't even they literally didn't see these things coming they were, they were hidden from radar the surface air missile systems were not up to pace at all with a f-111 uh, nighthawk there was nothing that they could do and they were able to you know take their payload drop it where they wanted and literally have not a single pilot or aircraft lost and it was it was a it was the beginning of of the stealth uh aircraft being being used in military conflicts uh the c5 galaxy transport plane that's this is a big one i've seen a few of these they are massive a7 the a10 the A6, you had a lot of attack aircraft here in this point. Uh, today, you just pretty much have the A10, but the A6 and the A7 were also used. AH-1 Cobra, AH-64 Apache, that's a good one right there. The uh, AV-8B Harrier, VTOL in its, uh, in its early days there, B-52, yeah, that's that's seen some work. The B fifty two. What can you say about it? It is it's probably the aircraft that has had the most longevity of any aircraft in in history. Um, it did seventy years. It has been in use and effective, and still has a role in our modern day military. It's pretty fascinating. C-130 Hercules. This is a transport aircraft. C-141 Starlifter. I think they phase these out. I don't, you don't see these very often anymore. I don't, I don't think so. And you have the Sea Knight. The Chinook. Hawkeye. And then you have the AWACS. Another version of the A6, this was the two-seater, I guess, or was it a, the uh, EA-6B Prowler. And then you got uh, just bombs, of course. With, with all those airplanes, you just gotta have bombs. And then, oh, here we go. With all that being said, with all the uh, death-dealing machines we just talked about, can't forget peace. Gotta have peace. A crucial element to that, and of course, it comes last, and, and all of that. Uh, I guess we can say something about that. So there's one stack down. Let's go with the let's go with the left stack. Oh, I can use the little finger hole there and not drop all of them on the ground. This is oh, we got geography. You ready for some geography, guys? Geography. Let's let's name all the countries involved in this conflict. We've got in alphabetical order. We've got Afghanistan, Argentina, Australia, Austria, 
Baghdad, so it's also cities too. Bahrain, Bangladesh, Basra, Belgium, Bulgaria, Canada with, of course, the Canadian Mounties. China, Czechoslovakia, not split up yet. Uh, Denmark, Diego Garcia, Egypt, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Honduras, Hungary, Iceland, Iran, Iraq, Israel, Italy, Japan, Jerusalem, Jordan, Kuwait, the city of Kuwait, <laughs> Lebanon, Libya, Luxembourg, don't forget Luxembourg, they're a very vital ally to have in this conflict, Malaysia, Morocco, Netherlands, New Zealand with, you know, all, all the sheep, I'm sure they were, you know, the, the service from those sheep in New Zealand, very important, uh, they sent those sheep over, they were on the front lines, those sheep, doing special, special operatives, operations behind lines, they sent those sheep in to do a sheep's job. Uh, Niger, Norway, Oman, Pakistan. Like see, some of these, they have like you know, beautiful landscapes, and they got Pakistan. This is just the map. It's like can't get a beautiful picture of Pakistan. But they got some cool mountains and stuff. Throw it on there. Uh, the Persian Gulf, Philippines, Poland, Portugal. This is the the one the lone Portuguese veteran of uh, Desert or Desert Storm. <laughs> They found an old man walking on the streets. Hey, you're going to Iraq. <laughs> you need to serve your country. The Americans are going to going to help you out. <laughs> Qatar or Qatar, how do you pronounce it? Uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, Senegal, Sierra Leone, South Korea, Soviet Union. There's the the Kremlin. Uh, Spain, Sweden, Syria. Taiwan, Tel Aviv, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, UK, there's Parliament, Big Ben. Just watched Christmas Vacation today, so. Hey, Parliament, Big Ben. Big Ben, Parliament. Uh, United States, of course. Washington, D.C. Yemen. So, those are all the countries or important cities, I guess, involved in Desert Storm. Pretty comprehensive list there. Got a got a thank you card here to the number of people involved in I guess make putting this together. Um, again, all the pro all the proceeds from this uh, set when they were sold originally went to veterans and families of uh, veterans, and that's good. Now we've got heads of state. We've got uh, Brian Mulroney of Canada. Brian Mulroney. A little fuzzy on my Canadian prime ministers. I'd have to do a refresher course on that. Don't go back very far with my knowledge of them. Looks like we've got Ali Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani. Rafsanjani. This is uh, president of Iran at the time. Tariq Aziz, Aziz, he was the Deputy Prime Minister or Foreign Minister of Iraq. We got uh, Saddam Hussein, President of Iraq. Every year he ran for president, he kind of just you know got all the votes. I don't know how that happened. He was just he was a, a really great at running a good campaign. You know, he got out to all the provinces of Iraq and got everybody to vote for him, even the the from the, the the farmers of the rural areas to the big cities, he was big everywhere. Uh, just, no one even felt like running against him. It was, he was just such a popular guy. Uh, Prime Minister of Israel, uh, Yitzhak Shamir. Yitzhak Shamir. We have the President of Jordan, King of Jordan, His Majesty, King Hussein the First. Did I should say His Majesty? Yes, it does. Okay. Good to be king, I guess. Uh, em Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Jaber Al Ahmed Al Sabah. That's a, little, that's a dramatic. That's like an album cover photo there. Right? He's got the black and white. I feel like he's gonna drop a, a new a new single. 
with that uh, album cover there. Uh, King Fahd bin Abdulaziz. Abdulaziz, Prime Minister and King. He's both Prime Minister and King of Saudi Arabia. Uh, Soviet Union, of course, Mikhail Gorbachev, birthmark guy, legend. Loves, loves Pizza Hut too. If you if you're watching this video, pause this video, go watch Gorbachev Pizza Hut commercial. It's life changing. You're you're gonna watch that video four or five times. You just you're, it, it bears repeating. It's an amazing commercial. It symbolizes capitalism's victory over communism. <laughs> it's a great thing. Uh, we have President of Syria, Hafez al-Assad. Al Al-Assad. Huh. See that name quite a bit. Al-Assad. Syria. Interesting. Uh, John Major, Prime Minister of UK. John Major. Like a superhero. Got a couple more here. Um, United Nations uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, Javier Perez del Quillar. Qu he looks like he was a Peruvian, native Peruvian. And he was appointed as a rep in 71 to the UN, and he became the Secretary General. So there you have it. Uh, James Baker. Secretary of State, United States, James Baker, under under Bush. And here you got the man himself, George Bush, one-term president. Before Trump, he was the last one-term president we've had. And here you go, the the mad lad himself, Uncle Dick, Dick Cheney. Just look at look at his expression there that's that's classic dick what are we doing right now he's still alive right yeah i think he is all right and then we've got another couple u.s guys we've got uh press secretary marlon fitzwater and then we've got of course the wait no we don't where's Okay, this is coming out of the U.S. Marine Corps General Alfred M. Gray. Alfred M. Gray. I thought it was Schwarzkopf for a second, but no, it's not. It's someone else. This is the Marine Corps guy. All right, so there you have it. The important places and people of Desert Storm. One more, one more stack here. You've got the, the title card here. Um, so they took all the benefit of the sales and gave them to families of Desert Storm veterans and there was a minimum guaranteed $1 million so I'm not sure if it was more it was at least $1 million that they donated so that's a good that was a great thing to do here we go you can, if, you, if you listen closely you can hear the card saying USA USA it's very quiet, but you can probably hear it. Um, homecoming, you know, troops coming home after after the war. Um, you had Vietnam veterans that were twenty years removed from almost twenty years removed, less than twenty years removed from the end of Vietnam, and we wanted to make sure that these soldiers were not treated the same way as were the, what Vietnam War veterans faced. So there was, I think this is really the what we have a lot of today with um, the homecoming of soldiers uh, really kind of began like with Desert Storm. It was a big, big change from the early 70s. Here we have uh, Schwarzkopf addressing Congress. So these are kind of like the events here, I guess, or we've got leaders as well so oh, we'll, we'll see but yeah Schwarzkopf there's our boy Stormin Norman the the original mad lad Stormin Norman we've got Lieutenant General Charles A. Horner uh, 
And then we've got uh, Margaret Hilda Thatcher, the Iron Lady. She was a former Prime Minister of the UK. Not sure why she's in this uh, thing, but oh well. Admiral Frank B. Kelso. So we got just some people, military leaders, it looks like. Uh, oh, here we go. This is a kind of a valuable one right now. Uh, Colin Powell passed away a couple months ago, but back in October, I want to say, maybe September. So rest in peace. And he was a uh, chairman, joint chiefs of staff, would go on to become um, secretary of defense uh, under um, under Bush Jr., uh, George H.W. Bush. So there's Colin Powell. We've got... Here's the official Norman Schwarzkopf card, number 89 in the set. Um, Ottawa, Canada, the Canadian executive branch. So that's what the Capitol building looks like in Ottawa. The Canadian national anthem with a totem pole there. Um, since 1980, the national anthem has been O Canada. Huh, some good history there behind the Canadian anthem. I should learn that because I I love going to hockey games and you got Canadian teams in town. So then you you got to have the national anthem going there before we do the U.S. anthem. So you get to hear both anthems. It's fun. Uh, Canadian system. Okay, that's interesting. The Iraqi system, which is just a person on a camel. That's what they do in Iraq. They just they have a camel. A person sits on it, and that's their system. <laughs> Just kidding. The Iraqi government is a republic. Broadly speaking, since the chief of state is not a monarch, since a coup d'etat in July 1968, Iraq has been governed by the decrees of the Arab ba of the Arab Baath, Baath Party, a socialist party, throughout the Council of Command. The president, Saddam Hussein, leads this council and the Council of Ministers. So it's not a monarchy, but it's also not a dictatorship, except it kind of is, and they say it's a republic, and yeah. The Kuwait system, so, so this is all just the system of governments you have in all these um, UN history, United Nations there, New York City, um, a lot of stuff for the United Nations, a lot of stuff actually. UK system, CIA, Congress, US Constitution. Department of Defense, DOD, Pentagon there, uh, the Pentagon card proper here, the Supreme Court for the Justice System, National Anthem being played at a baseball game looks like, uh, National Security Act of 1947, the NSA, National Security Act. Pledge of Allegiance. President and Cabinet. A really good blog. Baseball card vandals. They take cards and they use a Sharpie or they, they, they kind of make jokes at the expense of the card and they, they write on them. But they, it's, it, it's a little bit of art, and they've taken this one, they made a funny joke out of it. It was pretty good. So I recognize that one. Department of State, firefighters, military police, radar operators. So you have all these uh, personnel cards here the Chaplains Corps, infantrymen, Air Force, Navy, Army, Coast Guard, Marine Corps. Uh, Air Force Academy, uh, the Marine Warrior, West Point, Naval Academy, yeah, the U.S. Navy SEALs there, Amphibious Assaults, this is the intelligence file now, Arabic Language, Arab League, Chemical Biological Warfare, there was a risk of soldiers encountering 
chemical weapon use. We, we had intelligence of that being a thing and thankfully it wasn't used, um, but we were prepared for that. Uh, Christianity, let's see. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, chronolo chronology of events, conserving energy, dog tags, donating blood. Islam, Judaism. Is, is there two Judaism cards? Oh, oh, it says journalism. Sorry, I read it as Judaism because I had Islam before. Journalism and then Judaism. Mid East greeting customs. When shaking hands, always offer the right hand. The left hand is considered unclean. Grasp the hand more loosely than with Westerns. Arab men often greet each other by hugging and kissing on the cheek. Do not move away from an Arab who stands close during conversation, as it is customary to only stand one foot apart. Arabs often only ask questions before accepting friendships. Sorry, Arabs often ask personal questions before accepting friendships. No offense is intended. Middle East history, colonial. Uh, Middle East history, present. Middle East history, ancient, oil, Palestinians, reconnaissance, Red Cross, reserves, rank. It's a lot of information cards here. Camouflage, courtesy, discipline, education, first aid, fitness. Greenwich Mean Time, Hand Signals, Health Hygiene, Heroes Don't Do Drugs, Inspection, and Longitude and Latitude. So that's the whole set. That's the Pro Set Desert Storm Collection. What an interesting collection. I'm glad to add to my trading cards. This is a one of a kind thing. You don't, you don't see anything like this anywhere else. It's pretty comprehensive. It's a, there's a lot to it, but it's also um, it's, in a, it's in a nice little collective box here. It's well organized. Um, yeah, it's it's Desert Storm. It's a piece of history. Um, and I'm glad ProSet was able to do something like this and again have those benefits go towards military families uh, who were in, involved with Desert Storm. So it's kind of a neat thing. I, I have not seen anything like this ever since. It's a pretty cool thing. If you can find this set, it is a complete set. It doesn't say complete set on it, but it is a complete set. Um, so everything organized pretty well. And yeah, I'm happy to happy to have it that I can show it off to you and if you're interested in it just check out I say spend about maybe 30 35 dollars at the most on it to get a fair deal and uh, let me know if you like it